live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, daily created, highly anticipated edition of the Afternoon Swing Trading Floor. Your humble host, Jeremy Alexander, is with another daily dose of mentally delicious brain food, reminding each of you to love life, live life, and trade it. Folks, friends, family, fans, followers from around the entire globe, how's everyone doing on this illustriously delicious, fantastically terrific Tuesday? Rick says yes to all of the above. Charles March says good afternoon all. Good afternoon, sir. Charles had a great day. Beautiful. It is the 29th of January. There's only two days left, two trading days left in the markets, and it's uh, that, that means those are two days to really buckle down, lock in some games. For me, I trade all of my trades uh, based on the calendar month. So hoping to uh, be able to pull out some games. We have two days left in the, mar uh, in the month, and then February 1st is the beginning of the new month, obviously. Albert says it's his first evening session. Wonderful. Glenn Thomas says hello from Snow Covered, Pennsylvania. Welcome, Glenn. Marwan is here from Atlanta again. Pablo's here from Spain again. <laughs> Beautiful, wonderful. I love it. Really quick, before we dive in, I do want to talk about something that I did discuss in the morning room today. And I had about three traders ask me about this. So I just want to bring it up because as quickly as it seems, this will be a very fast week. You might not think it will be, but it'll be Friday before you know it. So I would love to go ahead and just take about 30 seconds to fill in everyone about what's going to happen at the end of the week. My main goal and mission is to enrich lives. And I wanna do that by teaching people how to properly, safely, and profitably trade the stock market. Is every day gonna be profitable? No, in fact, today was a losing day. But what I hope that you'll be able to take away from that is honesty, reliability, and simply being upfront and open and communicating what's a real life expectation. Would you rather me promise you and say, hey, every single day you're gonna make 10 grand, you're going to retire before next Thursday, you can quit your job and everything's gonna be perfect, only for that not to happen, <laughs> right? That would be great if that could occur, but it's going to be really, really difficult for that to occur if you have a smaller account or you're not familiar with trading or you just don't know how the process works. My goal is to truly give you, give each and every one of you a foundation, a plan, a perspective, some goals, and a really phenomenal team behind you, a community, a group of people to continue helping you and pushing you along, giving you information, giving you insight, giving you motivation, a group setting. Where, the, where we can do this together. Because the real life expectation, this is it. Ready for this? The real life expectation is, I would love for each and every one of you to make around three to 4% per month. And if you analyze that, obviously you can do really well. But this is kind of like the baseline. I think anyone truly can achieve three to 4% per month. Doesn't really matter what strategy you wanna use. I can teach you how to use a myriad of strategies. Doesn't really matter. But that's a baseline approach, it's an average. Some months you might get 1%, and some months you might get 10 or 15. But the real perspective is, I would love for you to pay off your debt, right? Pay off your debt, slowly chip away, get rich slowly, as the title of Rich, uh, Jim Cramer's book, I really like that book a lot, Get Rich Slowly, great book but just talks about the accumulation, the compounding interest, the things that we have to do every single day, day in and day out to become successful. You'll hear the stat all the time. 
that 99% of traders fail. Type in a one if you've heard that numerous times throughout all of your trading career. I'm gonna throw in a one because I've heard it a million and a half times. Here's the interesting part about that statistic. You ready for this? 99% of people fail at anything they do. If it's hard, 99% of people will fail, <laughs> okay? If it's difficult, so we're talking anything that's going to make you a lot of money is going to be hard. And anything that's gonna make you a lot of money, 99% of people will simply fail. They will give up, they'll quit, they'll throw in the towel, they will get afraid, they won't make that next jump, they won't take that next step, they will simply hit a hurdle, they will hit a wall, and they will just give up. So it's not 99% of traders. I mean, it's 99% of any profession out there that if you're going to make a substantial living and do really well and become truly financially free, 99% of people are gonna fail. Financial freedom for most of you entails being able to do what you want to do from where you want to do it in the world, okay? So we got to talk about that because if you want to do that, and most of you do, most of you want to be with your friends, your family, your wife, your husband, your children, and travel the world, see places, give to charities, pay off debts, and be totally 100% financially free. It does not come quickly. It's not easy, but it is obtainable through the stock market. And my promise to you is if you will work as hard at learning this information as I will work at teaching it, you will be able to achieve financial freedom. It is possible without question. I firmly believe that in my heart because I've seen hundreds of people, literally hundreds, like take 10 people and multiply that by hundreds. I've, I can, on my cell phone, text or phone call at any point in time, over 200 people that I know who have went from financially strapped, can't figure it out, trying to understand how they can make more money, to being in a position where they can do whatever they want from wherever they want in the world. And it doesn't, it's not because they learned from me necessarily, it's not because they went through real life trading, although most of them did or have at one point in their time, but what it is true is they did spend time around a community, they did spend time around mentors, and they did focus in on learning. So here's the good news. If you are interested in being a part of real life trading from here on out, remember the rest of the week is still entirely free, but I wanted to give you this information up front so you can begin to speak to your spouses and your partners about it. But here's the five product offer that we are presenting for anyone who is here right now. This is what you're doing right now. You're in the afternoon room. It's 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. The morning room is 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. The weekly options newsletter will be coming out later this afternoon. And next week, I'm creating a brand new program called Hedging with Options. If you have more than $100,000 in your account, doesn't matter if it's US dollars or Canadian dollars, you're gonna to wanna to take this program. It's gonna start next week, brand new product, never been taught before, five classes long, incredible. It's gonna be really exceptional, gonna be discussing something called the dynamic collar, talking about how to leg into potential uh, trades that can hedge your positions extremely well, talk about how you can get into a trade where you cannot lose mathematically, and then per, and just phenomenal program. That's going to be next week, okay? And then what we want to do is this is going to be the uh, a very wonderful program. I'm super excited about this. An algorithmic trading program, brand new real life trading product that's going to teach you and focus on how to craft and build your own trading robot. Type in a three if that sounds exciting.
A lot of people are really pumped about algorithms and building their own robots and learning how to do that. And that right there is going to be a program where we're going to walk you step by step on how to build it, how to implement it, how to change it, tweak it. Everything is going to be taught in this particular program. This is going to come out in March. So this is also just weeks away. And you will get access to all of that for only $189 a month if you want to go the monthly route. If you want to pay for the entire year, you can get everything for 72% off. It's pretty incredible. Totally up to you, of course. You're welcome to chat with your wife, your husband, or any other financial person that is in your life. But for me personally, I do pay about $200 and $16 a month for my cell phone bill. That's between me and Ashley. I got uh, international text messages. I got uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, a few other things that added in there. But this is less than my personal cell phone bill that I pay every month. Uh, this is also less than I pay in, I think, gasoline. <laughs> this is less than, uh, I, I paid this today just for the webinar to hold all the people that were in the webinar. I paid $189 for that today. So just keep that in mind that this particular value is truly incredible. Want to throw that out there. Make sure you're aware of it. Make sure you know that's what you're talking about. That's what we're dealing with. And you would have access to everything that you could possibly want. This is just the beginning. Because you also get access to Slack channel. You also get access you know, to all the recordings. You get access to everything you want. It's exceptional. Let me know if you have any questions. So I'm going to dive in. Uh, give me three seconds. Sorry about that. I clicked on the button. So now I'm going to go ahead and dive in uh, into the trading um, session for the day. And let's go talk about SPY. Mark says, I belong to Real Life Trading since October 2016 and continue to treasure Real Life Trading. Back at you, man. And I apologize about the webinar thing today. I know you said you couldn't see Blake's screen. and I couldn't really figure out why that was. Not really entirely sure, but... We treasure you as well, Mark, and thank you so much for being a part of the team. It was great interviewing you a few weeks ago, and I love the team. So anyway, I want to give you that information. I wanted to at least let you know up front that's what the cost would be after this particular free week. So if anyone is interested in that, the link is in the chat pane. Click on it. Sign up. It's an obvious no-brainer. If you want to make money, you have to surround yourself with people who are doing that. If you wanna be successful, you gotta surround yourself with people who are successful. SPY on the daily charts. So yesterday we kind of discussed that most likely we're just gonna slowly keep creeping a little higher. Uh, this is the kind of the wave count that I'm looking at. Some type of one, two, three, this is most likely a wave four, and then we're gonna get some type of wave five. And on the wave five, it will be uh, potentially a little bit higher. Mike says, will there be any other courses over the year that are included? Uh, I can say, Mike, if there are any other courses, you will get access to it. So the real life traders who are, you know, been subscribing like Mark since 2016, any course that I ever create, if you're a current subscriber, you'll get that access to that course. Uh, Mr. Nito says, do you have any promo for the day trading or the morning trade only? So Nito, um, right now the morning room only is uh, $219, or at least that's what it was last week. So you can get $189 and that's the cost of the morning room. That's already cheaper than the morning room. So you might as well just pay the 189 because it's already cheaper than just the morning room by itself. So great question. I appreciate you asking though. Thank you so much. And Mike, if that helps answer your question as well, I appreciate it. Thank you for asking. Very valid question. Um, okay, cool. I love it. Let's see, Nito says, you great, man. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Just trying to be like you. Trying my best. So SPY, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a pennant pattern lower, uh, higher lows, lower highs, the, con the consolidation is here. So we are consolidating, here's the hourly chart. Uh, the hourly chart, again, 
looks nice or just hanging out at the 50. This is the 100 simple on the, on the hourly chart. So we're really kind of just chilling. So my thought is if we drop down into this support, uh, that would probably be a buying opportunity. And, you know, we'll just kind of see what actually ends up occurring. But at the present moment in time, I'm just a little bit more bullish. Unless we close below 260.41, that's kind of like my line in the sand, which is realistically the low from January 23rd. If the SPY on a daily chart closes below that level, I'll start to look for a little bit more bearish trades. But until then, I'm going to be moderately a little bit more bullish. Um, beautiful. So that is the SPY. And let me go on to the Qs. QQQ. So here's the Qs and the Qs. So what we have on the Qs is a little bit of an interesting candle pattern. Today was a smidge more bearish on the Qs, but we're gonna be looking at Apple and AMD a little bit later in just a few moments. We're still hanging out at a relatively okay support. Here's the hourly chart, and uh, I'm actually kind of keeping an eye on for you know, the Qs to potentially bounce higher. So depending on what we really do tomorrow with Apple and how we open and everything, which again, we're gonna be looking at that in just a few seconds, this potential double bottom could be quite nice on the Qs. So I will be watching for that tomorrow morning and be looking for a gap up. Any type of gap on the Qs most likely would be a decent trap for some of the bears and I could see a good move higher coming in on the Qs, especially if we open above the high of today. So we open above the high of today and I could see a really pretty gap that would take place there on the queues. That would be kind of interesting to see if that plays out. Here's the Dow Jones ETF, the DIA. And again, we just slowly kind of fill in the gap from yesterday, right? The gap down from Sunday to Monday, slowly fill in that gap, moving averages, just hanging out. And then the IWM doing its thing. So for right now, things just still seem to be a little bit more on the bullish to neutral side, a lot of waiting. We have some individual stock trades. I don't have anything short term on the indices right now. Not to say that we can't get anything, but just short term, obviously long term, you all you all know that I got uh, some positions on the SPY, but that's again, long term stuff. Short term, just hanging out waiting to see what we do. I think this could be a decent time for an iron condor, but I kind of want to wait just a little bit longer to see what we do tomorrow. There's supposed to be some Federal uh, Reserve stuff coming out tomorrow. We'll see how we react to that. And I think everyone and their mom can see that volume is declining. We got to bounce off the 200 simple. We have this in you know, this pennant pattern right here on the SPY. And if we trade sideways and break higher, um, should be good to go. So anyway, that's what I got on that one. Um, perfect. Uh, Graham, that is a very long post. I won't be able to read that, but either Ashley can, or if you don't mind, Graham, emailing me. I'll be getting my emails tonight, jeremyatrelyftrading.com. I do my best to answer all my emails within 24 business hours. So yeah, get, get at me. I appreciate you asking that question. I'm just not able to answer it right now because it's that's a long wall of text. <laughs> I'm a slow reader, Graham. <laughs> yeah, man, just shoot me a quick email. Uh, we'll take care of it. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. First on the list for today is HEXO. This is a stock that was requested because uh, there's a trader in on this one. And that trader's name is Andrew. Andrew's in a bullish swing on HEXO. He bought off the 100 simple moving average. And I think at this particular point in time, Andrew, I mean, it's looking good. I like this candle. I like the fact that it made a higher high and a higher low. I like the lower shadow. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the hourly chart. So the hourly charts, uh, you kind of got a little bit of a, a soft little bounce here on the hourly. And then again, back to the daily, you got some moving averages. Here's the 100 simple, and you're kind of bouncing off of that. 
you got in at a good price. So I think you got in off of the 100, which was $5 even. So at this particular point in time, ma'am, I think it's probably best just to keep on holding. All right, folks, let's talk about it. The big name, the apple, the apple of my eye, gapping up because they make a lot of money. <laughs> Not massively surprising. I did uh, type it a three, if you remember me talking about yesterday, apple gapping up. That's what I said was most likely, the mo you know, the most likely case scenario is because Apple's been down a whole heap ton. And uh, you know, another surprise, Apple makes $84 billion with an L. $67 billion in cash flow, $130 billion in the bank. I mean, this is a really nice gap on Apple. We did have a pretty decent bearish day today on Apple. And what I'm really excited about is uh, a little bit of a continuation. So this is the five minute chart. You can see a little bit of a spike down and then uh, just a nice little move higher. Um, my analysis suggested that we would gap up, trade down a little bit and then bounce. I, I mean, I still think that's exactly what's gonna happen. So we'll open here, we probably trade down a little bit and then we continue higher. Question, Jeremy, where is the next target on Apple? That's a very good question. If we were to come to the weekly, this is my thought process on Apple and it has been for a few weeks. So what you'll notice is there's been a time recently where Apple trades down to the 200 simple on a weekly, right here, and then bounced. Where did it bounce to? Right into the 100 simple on the weekly. Is that going to happen? Probably. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't think this, this is the bottom forever on Apple, meaning I don't think it just does this and you know, we never see it run down again. Although it certainly could be. I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna be scared, but this you know, would be a wonderful, just such a beautiful trade opportunity because that's exactly what we did back in 2016. And I traded that thing like Charlie Daniels plays the fiddle, by the way. That was a really profitable time for me and a lot of other traders on Apple. But with this gap up 6%, nice looking move. I mean, that's a strong gap and go on Apple. Really, really powerful. So on the five minute chart, I mean, I don't know how much it's gonna pull back. It could get up to 174 before market open. I don't even know. It is a gap and go. People are trapped, people are losing money, and uh, you know, it's up $9.90 right now after hours. And uh, yeah, that's, that's really about it. So it'll be a good gap. I like it a lot, and uh, all the moving averages, I mean, the 50 is at 166.04, so that'll be a little bit of a resistance, but you can best believe that we'll be looking at Apple tomorrow. Uh, there's the temp, there's the target, and it does look like my worst case scenario on Apple will not play out with that gap up, which is good news, because again, there's a lot of traders in bullish on Apple longer term. That's really it. Any questions on Apple? If you did sell some puts, congratulations. I did not sell any puts, but there really wasn't that much premium. With this particular gap up, I really most likely will wait a little bit before I sell any calls, like a call option against it. If I kind of come back to the last time that we were down at these levels again on Apple, you know, when it, when it did hit the 50, it paused at the 50, you know, retested it and then continued a little bit higher. I could see something very similar to this happening, even though, right, this was not earnings. Earnings were actually back over here. So even though this wasn't earnings, you can see that it interacts with the 50 bounce and then kind of continued higher and then trade down again at some point. I'm not saying that will happen, but for right now, based on this gap and based on the bearishness of the market in general, I like that gap and I think Apple will continue higher from here into about 173. And then at that point, I might do a covered call. 
we'll see. Maybe do like a 190, 200 March or April, something like that. We'll see. But anyway, that's Apple. That's my thoughts. And uh, yeah, beautiful move. Nicely done. Nice gap. Nice. <laughs> $84 billion. No big deal. AMD. So AMD, I, uh, I do have a confession to make. I did set up an absolutely phenomenal trade on AMD, and I cut the cord a little bit too early. So this was the day trade on AMD. Today, I kind of traded like a cat swims. Wasn't that pretty. I'm gonna do better tomorrow, rest assured. So here is the AMD trade. And it was based on the 15 minute chart, 1945 by 1971. This green line was actually the 200 simple moving average on the daily chart. And it really did pretty much perfectly, just trade right up to that level and roll down beautifully. I mean, that was an easy R and a half on AMD. So, I will talk about the trades that I did place this afternoon, and I won on both of them. They were very, very, very small wins, so it helped out a little bit that that was the case, but I should have kept that trade open. If anyone did take that on AMD, congratulations. I mean, that was the trade to take, it seems. But this gap up on AMD is also quite solid. Tomorrow appears that we could have a relatively decent bullish day out there in the market. We will see, obviously there's a long way to go into market open, but trading some nice bulls would not be that surprising. Feel free to write down my thoughts initially. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday morning, right? So Wednesday morning, likely a quick bull run up and then a fade down followed by higher highs later next week. So again, this gap on Apple and AMD will be helping the market, I feel like. And you know, with that kind of slowly getting pressed up a little bit higher, this is a great gap on AMD. I mean, this is so pretty. Obviously, like I said, we'll have to see how this opens, but I can almost set up this trade for tomorrow right now. Again, I don't know how this is gonna open, uh, so I will give it a little bit of room, but Joel, make sure you tell Dennis to not be bearish on AMD overnight. Um, I'll look to give this on a pullback. But yeah, that's a tremendous gap, 21.10. Again, I'll see if we get any type of retest on this one, depending on how it opens, but that's gorgeous. Richard says, it's already moving the market. Mm-hmm, it is indeed. Falco says, you have some big earnings tomorrow a.m. as well. So yeah, I mean, that's a wonderful bullish gap and go on AMD. My buddy Brad, Ru Brad Runge has a $16 put sale on AMD, which we had a really good discussion today with Dennis Dick about that, about selling some puts. And Brad also has a 2450 cover call expiring this Friday. So he does have some shares of AMD. And it's a beautiful thing to see this kind of chop around in that zone, because most likely the, uh, those options will expire worthless this Friday for AMD. So Friday, I'm gonna put AMD on the list for Brad. One other little small perk about being in the trading rooms is if anyone does send me their trades, I will put them on the chart. You know, if, if it's a nice, calm, normal amount of trades, I will track those trades for you. I'll help you with them. And I look over all of my charts every single night and do my best to memorize every single trade that a lot of people are in to make sure that I can help them, you know, best approach it. So just another perk. It's part of my, it's part of the thing that I like to do. I really like to help people. And uh, that, that's a nice trade for Brad. And I love that gap. So we'll see what happens on AMD. Obviously tomorrow morning will be a packed, packed house. Uh, but that's AMD. 
Next on the list is PayPal. I got for a Tesla on here too. So PayPal, P-Y-P-L. Joel says 2117 is my level for the week in AMD. So if it breaks below, above that, be ready. PayPal is pulling back some. Earnings also around the corner on PayPal. My 2019 target on PayPal is 111.12. Don't know if we're gonna hit that for sure. Obviously, I mean, I wish I knew anything for sure in the market, but based on what we have so far, I would not be surprised for PayPal to also gap up. I'd love a retest. You know, so if, so if PayPal does gap down, beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful. But I love the company. I know exactly how they make money. I use them pretty much every single day. They're really intuitive, very easy to use, great customer service, used by numerous online platforms, and they make money while they sleep. Big fan of PayPal. So my thought is if for some reason we gap down on earnings, this would be kind of like my buy zone. So 87 and some change. You know, if we gap down massively lower than that, I still probably would look to fade it. Fade it meaning trade it bullish. And then of course, if PayPal does gap up, these are some bears in here on PayPal. So you have some bearish candles. So if we gap up on PayPal, it's an all time high territory and it's going to fly. It'll hit 111 by April 1st if we gap up on earnings, most likely. So I'm keeping an eye on this one. I like the trend a lot. Uh, we'll see how it gaps. And I'm really kind of fingers crossed for a gap down on PayPal. A gap down, like a huge miss, huge earnings miss, gap down to 73. Oh man. I might even borrow some of Joel's money to buy that stock. <laughs> I said, Joel, send me some money, man. Let me buy this thing. But that's, uh, anyway, we'll see. I like the trends. You can see the target. That's kind of my thoughts and analysis on PayPal. Next on the list is Starbucks, S-B-U-X. And Starbucks very well could become a weekly options newsletter candidate. Everyone is going to get the weekly options newsletter set up for today and Starbucks could be it. It's good for weekly options newsletter. I know the dividends are around the corner. So usually when stocks like Starbucks pay dividends, you do have a small down day and you kind of have to deal with that. And we went through that on CVS as well. But I love the gap up that happened. I love that doji. I love this candle. I love the doji today. So a lot of indecision. Uh, moving averages look good. Hourly chart looks good. If you turn the extended hours off, the trend looks nice. So this one very likely is going to be the top candidate for my weekly options newsletter play on Starbucks. And just looking to hop in bullish and let it continue. When it makes a new all-time high around 71-ish, that'll be the spot that we look to sell to lock in profit. Okay, so that's Starbucks. Here's Dell. Looking at Dell for my boy, Mark. Albert says, is this the gap list from the gap between last night and this morning? No, this list uh, is the stocks that were requested yesterday in the afternoon swing trading room. So at the end of the today, I'll get your request for tomorrow and I'll write them down and then we'll all go look at them. Some of them obviously are stocks that are gapping, but yeah, a lot of these are just stocks that were requested for today's class. Dell. Mark, congrats, man. Yesterday was a beautiful day. Another small bearish inside day candle. Keep, keep rocking it, man. Uh, if this, this thing breaks higher, I mean, why not? Let it just keep on being a surge monster for you. I don't see any specific reason for you to take off a whole heap ton of your position now. Depends, of course, on how many shares you have or how many call, call options you have. But if you did take off some position here, I get it. Otherwise, on Dell, keep waiting for that to just grind a little bit higher. I do like the volume that came in yesterday. Nice inside candle on Dell, and just keep an eye out for that to pop a little bit higher. Go, Daddy. One of my 
Uh, longer term buy stocks. I don't. I do not have any position in this one, but I want some. I like GoDaddy, and I like GoDaddy since 2016. I've done some put sales on GoDaddy in the past to get some shares, and I never got put any shares. Look at this trend on GoDaddy. Some of you might wonder why I like GoDaddy so much as far as just a longer term investment. Great customer service. I mean, really quite good. If you call them, you're getting someone in Arizona, speaks great English, they, they know a lot about websites and emails and servers and hosts. I've never really had a bad experience. People are gonna to continue to buy domain names. Now, I know there's many other websites that you can buy domain names from, but GoDaddy owns some of those websites. Here are some previous trades that I had on GDUI. So the only, um, so this was the last time I was looking at GoDaddy was like, let's say 2015. So this is when I started looking at it, about, uh, about going long on GoDaddy, and that was, you know, it's gonna take forever to load, but that was anyway, back in 2015, and then did this put sale November 2015 when GoDaddy was around, so 30 a share, and then doing another one over earnings back in 2016. So I've done a few put sales on GoDaddy, and I don't mind doing them again, but what is very interesting to note is you do, and we, we are above all moving averages on GoDaddy. One other thing to keep in mind, what's another reason that I might like GoDaddy? Any guesses? Who can read my mind for one frequent trader point? Thomas says, you use them. That is correct, I do use them, but that wasn't the mind reading capabilities. Hey, Super Bowl, <laughs> that's right. The Super Bowl is coming up. And that's the exact same thing I said last year on GoDaddy, and this was last year, by the way. February, Super Bowl, you got a quick spike down. So again, I'm not saying it's going to happen again this year, but you got a quick spike down on GoDaddy last year, pretty much right after the Super Bowl, it gapped into the 50 and then just bounced. That was a really good buying opportunity. So you're welcome to keep your eyes on this one. I am. Short term, we can watch it, but we can also watch this for a longer term trade as well. I do want to check out the put sale premium for March. And again, remember, selling puts for me is just simply a way to get put shares that I kind of want to own anyway. 57.50 March put sale brings in, wow, that's a, that's a decent chunk of premium, about 80, 85 cents. And a 55 for March brings in 50 cents. So again, for put sales, it would not be a lot of position. So only 300 shares would be three contracts. And if you did a 55 put sale on GoDaddy for March, we're not talking about bank robbing money, okay? You're talking literally $150 minus commission, so $147. It's not a lot. But realistically, what that would be for me is a way to say, hey, Newsom, do you want to be patient and chill out for two and a half months and not do anything on GoDaddy and get paid either way? And I go, yeah, I do. <laughs> sure, that sounds good. And if GoDaddy does do this, then I make 150 bucks. If it does this, I make 150 bucks, this, 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 and even this. But even if GoDaddy comes all the way down by between now and March and closes below 55, I'll still get $150. And now I own GoDaddy 30, 25% lower than it is right now. So $10, well, not quite that much, I'm sorry. $10 cheaper on a $65 stock. So not a bad, not a bad little low. So that is what I'm gonna do. Uh, and I also will look to take this directionally as well. Again, you by no means have to do this trade, but 
if you do, and you do three contracts, uh, it would pay for the entire month of your life trading. Just saying. Okay, three contracts would only be 150 bucks ish. I'll say ish with commissions. So I just want everyone to know this is not something like. I mean, you can sell more if you wanted to. If you if you really don't mind buying that many shares. March fifteenth. 2019 and I have a few marks positions out there now okay March 15th give me a few quick seconds and another put sale on GDPY also keep a real close eye on this one as moving averages on the daily are starting to cross they're starting to cross, 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 cross. They're starting to cross, 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 cross. That could be the new GoDaddy theme song. Okay. Pretty simple. Again, you by no means have to do that particular trade. I'm not saying you should or should not. Just a way if you don't mind buying shares, you're like, you know what? I'd like to buy some shares of GoDaddy. If you want them at 55, that's a way to get paid to do this trade and you're really getting paid to be patient. And of course, after earnings come around, if it does something crazy or gaps up or whatever, you can we can just buy those back for probably five, 10 cents, free up our margin and go buy some more. Also, here's the 100 simple on a weekly chart and it's below that even. So 57.50 is also a good price. I'm just going real conservative with 55, but 57.50 is also a nice little level. All right. Next on the list is Square. Bow, 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 bow. So Square was the gap of the day. And I kind of like it. <laughs> Somewhat excited that it happens. What I'm not excited about is that I missed this trade by a few pennies. And we set up a wonderful trade on this one this morning, shorting it pretty much right out the gate. And again, it was a very, very small miss. I will be sending out that recording a little bit later, but I tried to get in, uh, sorry, I drew that a little bit low. I tried to get in right here on Square. That red line was my entry, and I missed this one by about 12 cents, which is really just straight up brutal. And then um, you had this nice little bullish lower shadow on a five minute. It closed below, and uh, I'm going to back trade. Let, let me pause for a second. When I trade like a cat swims, AKA poorly, all right? When I trade like a giant buffoon, I go back and back trade the stocks I miss 30 times. So tonight, I'm gonna go back trade square 30 times. I'm gonna do 10 times on a five minute chart, 10 times on a three minute chart, and 10 times on a one minute chart to remind myself to not be a giant chicken when you see this type of candle after the gap that Square had, with a close below that candle, I truly have no earthly idea why I didn't short right there with a stop loss right there. No idea. Couldn't tell you. Santosh says, what all do you look at when you're back trading? Uh, nothing really. I'm just going to burn the chart into my brain to make sure that I, I trade it the right way. So the next time uh, I see that pattern again, I'll take it. It's really all it is. I'll be doing that on NVIDIA tonight as well, just back trading it numerous times. So I'm just gonna go back and just, I mean, I'm not kicking myself for missing the open. Falco says, look at the three minute chart. Dude, I, I looked at the three minute chart the, the whole time. I mean, I'm gonna go back and I listen to myself, I recorded myself. Why, I don't know why. Why did I not take this breakdown or this breakdown or this breakdown? The only thing I can fathom is the 10 EMA on the daily chart. I forget where that was. 
So the 10 EMA on the daily chart was at the time 71. So let me go back in here to a five minute chart. So 71, yeah, that was right here. It's the only thing I can think of. So 71, I mean, I, I knew that was, that was causing me to, look at this S curve. What? Oh man, like, like a brick flies. Look at this S curve. Type in a four if you made money on Square today. Because by the way, a lot of traders did. Just because I missed the opening trade and then somehow screwed up that setup, congratulations for all those who did make money on Square today. There's my boy Albert Chin throwing in a four. Wonderful job, Albert. Uh, I know Drake made some good games. Devin says, I made two R on NVIDIA, thanks to your advice from yesterday. Oh, don't, <laughs> I'm about to look at NVIDIA too. That's the thing, folks. I cover the good and I cover the bad. You got to learn from both. There is no trader here who's only going to have good days. You got to figure out when you have a poor day, what happened, make the tweaks, make the adjustments. This was actually the first day in three months that I lost when I woke up early and journaled all my thoughts beforehand. So I wrote down in my journal kind of what my thoughts were for the day at about 6.50 a.m. Central Time. Uh, that's when I started the journal. And I've been 100% winning, even if it was a, like a $3 win. I've been 100% profitable every day I did this. So today was the first day that that did not happen. So anyway, um, I'm going to put in some work tonight. I'm going to figure that out. we we'll be back tomorrow, 100% ready to absolutely crush. So square. I missed it. And that's okay. That is okay. The other thing, there's a lot of traders in Square with all kinds of different trades. And so Robert Falco has a $55 February put on Square. And that one um, most likely will expire worthless. Even though it had a nice down day today, if you wanted to sell a put on Square, today is the day to do it. So tomorrow morning, there still might be some premium, depending on when you want to get in. My thought process would be around 60 or lower. Regular February would be a great option sale. Two weeks away, $60 put sale, you can get 83 cents. Tomorrow at open, it'll probably be much less than that. But if you're doing any kind of option sales on Square, that's where I would do it. And uh, it looks good. Carity, already talked about Apple earlier in the, uh, in the session. Um, I do also have the $70 covered call that expires this Friday. So as long as Square closes below there or gets really close to it, I might just buy that one back and then sell another one. So right now, all is good on Square. Great little trade. I do want to talk about, what time is it? I might go a little bit long today. NVIDIA, I can't go too long though. Um, NVIDIA, Facebook, and Visa. Let me go talk about NVIDIA because some traders didn't play this much better than I did. And uh, congrats, I tried, and I, I should have tried a little bit harder. Again, shout outs to Devin. Devin, I'm very happy that you made two R's on NVIDIA today because it did gap down this morning. It did have some bearishness. It didn't sell off nearly as hard as it sold off on November 19th, but it did sell off. And here's the five minute chart. And the five minute chart on NVIDIA, um, here's what I did. And I thought it was the right move, but I guess it was not. So on NVIDIA, I'll, I'll kind of go candle by candle. So I was right here. And I thought to myself, okay, it looks like a lower high. That looks, you know, pretty. So here's the lower high. Got a higher low right here. This is an inside high wave bearish candle. All is looking good. No qualms really there. Next candle came in, another inside candle. So I thought to myself, yep, I'm going to enter, enter here for the stop loss right there. Pretty tight stop, agreed, but it was a dollar, relatively aggressive. I get it that there was a pre-market support right there. I understand that, and that's probably 
What I should have done is wait for a close. Based on that low, again, when I back trade in video this tonight, that's what I'm gonna remind myself is, hey man, just, you know, the next day, next day follow through, wait for a little bit of a close. Um, I didn't. So got in there and then within three minutes got stopped out. So that was actually the fastest day trade stop out that I've had this entire year. And the, the funny part, ready for this, as soon as I got stopped out, this candle came in. I was like, okay, well, good job getting stopped out. Then after that candle came in, this one came in. Whoo! As soon as I saw that candle, my, my body was like, dude, do it. Enter here, stop there. Don't be a chicken. That's the trade that you need to take. So that's what my, my trading mind said. And then my conscious mind was like, bro. You don't want to lose any more money. <laughs> you just you just lost five hundred dollars in three minutes. Don't take this trade. So just out of pure fear, I didn't get into this trade again because that's a tweezer top type of pattern, matching lows. I mean, if you're going to take a secondary trade, that's the one. And that was it. Boom, 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 bam. Exit a little bit of profit right there, not a lot, since it made a new low, probably take off a quarter of the position, lower the stop, exit another quarter of the position right there, lower the stop, uh, inside candle, morning star, retest, one more candle comes in, lower the stop to here, 134.33, and uh, hold, hold, get trailed out right there. So it looks like I'm a back trade NVIDIA again, because even, even that trailing stop would have gotten me because NVIDIA did go a little bit lower. Yeah, so I gotta play with good old NVIDIA. Nice and wild today. Didn't really follow a lot of the rules, but that's all right. I'll, have to, I'll back trade NVIDIA 30 times as well. I did a great analysis on it yesterday, it didn't follow through, but here's the analysis that I have today. This is gonna be some good analysis. All right, here we go. Tomorrow should, be a perfect trap on NVIDIA. Looking for a lower wick to come in, bears hop on, and then it bounces. If I short it, I will wait for candles to close, retest, and then play reversal pattern. So what I mean by that is, based on today's candle, it's an inside day candle. So I'm thinking the market's gonna go, oh man, everyone's gonna have shorts right there, and they think it's just gonna do this. Which, obviously it could, but I think it's probably gonna go bloop, and then pop a little bit, and then have a little bit of a bullish day, run up a little bit, and then roll over. Take a screenshot, that's what I think is gonna happen on the video from here. I obviously could be wrong, probably am, I'm usually wrong 50% of the time, but I know I'm a really good at mitigating risk. So I'm gonna watch NVIDIA tomorrow for that particular move, see if it runs a little bit higher, maybe play it bullish if a good bullish setup comes in with a good trap. And then when it trades up a little bit to some hourly averages, short it, and then I do think NVIDIA will trade eventually down into the 200 simple on a weekly chart, which is about 121.75. Yep. Okay, so right about there. And then from there, we'll kind of pause and we'll see. Okay, next on the list is Facebook. And this is going to be a kind of a quick analysis because this is a, a trade that I took on Facebook and Visa today. It was a bullish fade and it just really didn't do much. So here's the daily chart on Facebook. It traded right into the moving averages. And that's why I went bullish. That was pretty much it. Bearish candle came down all the way to the moving averages. Here's the five minute chart. Oh, oh man, look at this market, already starting to rally. Um, here was the double bottom that I played. Boop, 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 boop. There's the double bottom, closed by the neckline. I got triggered in on a pullback right here, and then it just never broke out. So I waited and waited and waited and waited like an hour and a half and it just never made higher highs. So I exited, simple as that. If you're gonna play a bullish fade, I mean at some point it should pop. 
So this was the setup right here. And I exited somewhere around these candles. Somewhere around 12.15, 12.20. Uh, I just got out, took a super small gain, and that was it on Facebook. But um, I will say, since we're here on Facebook, earnings around the corner, 100 simple moving average pressing this one lower. If Facebook also gaps up on earnings, here's my, uh, what, what should I call it, the call, of the, the call of the day. If Facebook also gaps up on earnings, it's my prediction that the market makes new all-time highs this year. Woo! Big news, Newsom. Just from one gap, yep, just one gap. If Facebook beats and gaps above 153.50, on earnings, it's my th my take that the markets make new all-time highs this year because that, that would be a killer bullish gap. And if Fang starts moving again, Apple, Facebook, they all start gapping, they all start moving up. I think we make new all-time highs. Yep. We'll see. We will see. Visa. So I played Visa very similarly uh, to Facebook. It traded down, it posted a glorious double bottom, and then it just never did anything. So this was the double bottom right here. Boom, 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 boom. Simple, classic, easy. Set it up on this candle, filled on this candle. Uh, I did actually hold through this little pullback right there. Then I moved the stop after it bounced, and I exited somewhere on this candle. So again, right around the same time I was actually on Facebook, yeah, right right about here, I was like, I just don't see it, doesn't look that great, pulled the rip cord, which was a great thing to do, because again, it just never popped, it never made any higher highs, it never had any really good bullishness, nothing really that great. So canceled that setup, and that was that on Visa. But it's hard to cancel, it just bailed, just for a super small game. So overall, down on the day, but down small. That's the good news. Less than an R. Right at, right at less than an R. So I can, I can easily live with that. Tomorrow should be a great day. Okay, Microsoft, MSFT. Microsoft, I learned about this one a little bit too late. This was the daily chart on Microsoft. And once it took out that support and broke the 200 simple moving average, that was it. That was a really, really solid day trading opportunity that I just did not see in time. And here's your five minute chart, very first five minute candle. Look at this, perfection. Broke it down and then you got another bullish high wave candle. And once that thing broke lower, I know for sure if I was watching the trade at that time, my entry would have been there with the stop loss. I would have taken that trade all day other than Saturday and Sunday. It would have been a dramatically beautiful trade, but I didn't. I didn't see that one time. It was not on my radar because it did not gap. Uh, but if someone would have told me that Facebook, or sorry, that Microsoft was making new daily lows and broke 105, taking out the 200 simple, I would have hopped on that. Because 104.67 was the 200 simple. So breaking below there, I mean, you know, just, you're gonna have a little bit of weakness. Tanya says, where have you taken profit? I would have gotten out at two R's. You know, so again, in hindsight, trading is the easiest thing in the world, but I would have exited uh, exactly two R's. So somewhere on this candle, entry, yeah, right there. I would have exited pretty much halfway into this candle, most likely. Maybe if I was feeling froggy, I would have held a little bit longer, but I would have exited somewhere around there. It's just two times the risk. Nothing crazy, but I did not, alas, I missed Microsoft today. Goldman Sachs, took some of GS. Here's Goldman Sachs, and on the daily charts, uh, we're just hanging out. Slowly chilling, again, the market's up a little bit. Goldman Sachs up as a, a point. The 100 simple moving average will be a little bit of a brick wall, but buy the dip on Goldman Sachs. Don't see anything specifically special on that one right now. Adobe, A-D-B-E. So Adobe had a little bit of a bearish candle today. Earnings is a ways away. 
So we have some time on Adobe before we do anything specific. Um, I don't really see much on Adobe. It doesn't look super bullish though. I kind of agree. Interesting failure of the long-term moving averages. Let me do this. Let me just draw some lines and I'll come back to this one tomorrow because again, I like the gap down. I like this kind of bearish engulfing candle. I like the fact that you're below all of the long-term moving averages. We're battling the short-term moving averages right now. The weekly, mm, kind of, sort of. And you can see that we're also making lower highs. So for me on Adobe, I'm just gonna wait that one out. Come back to it tomorrow just to see what she's doing. Okay, so speaking of Adobe, Next on the list is ticker symbol MO. I had someone request this one yesterday, Altria. And here's the daily chart, ticker symbol MO. Realistically, it just came down to a strong, strong support level. This is a blue chip, dividend paying, pretty strong, relatively speaking, fundamental company. And if I remember correctly, there's a long-term moving average down here that we're about to run into. Yep, so the 100 simple on a monthly chart on ticker symbol MO. So my thought process on this one for anyone who was looking at getting into it was just slowly tiptoe in, right? Tiptoe in, I wouldn't take a massively large position because it most likely will chop around, you know, down here for a bit. But I get it on a technical chart, it looks like straight up death. If anything, it could retest and continue a little bit lower and then bounce. I think MO is a long-term play if you're going bullish or a very, very short-term play if you're going bullish. I like this hourly chart. It does look like it's gapping up after hours. After hours. There's probably a lot of things gapping up right now. And I actually will put this on my list to day trade tomorrow if it does have a cute little gap up because it does have a small shadow it has sold off dramatically, and I think it ha has a little move to run up to the upside. Alex says, do you use trading charts to send your orders? I do not. Nope, I use thinkorswim to do that. Here is C-R-O-N and Cron. This one was moving kind of majestically today. Nice little high wave candle. Obviously, you're gonna get some selling up here after CRON makes a 100, almost a 100% growth since December 24th. Huge move on CRON. High wave candle, let this one pull back a little bit farther before you start buying the dip. Um, you know, kind of let it, let it battle the 20 a little bit more. Maybe pull in to like 17 and a half, something like that. But CRON is making some beautiful moves. There's a lot of you trading this one right now. The whole pot stock game is pretty fired up, I know. So with this high wave bearish candle, this is not the best time to buy. Remember, CRON has already gone up almost 100% in right out of months. Buy the dip, don't get caught up into the hype because here's the last high wave candle at an all time high. I'm not saying it's going to happen again. What I am saying is, if you want to buy, just try to buy it a little bit cheaper rather than buying a breakout at an all time high. Next on the list is Whirlpool. Man, Whirlpool faded all day. All day. I missed every penny of Whirlpool. It just gapped down and continued higher all day long. The, bet, the funniest part look at this first candle right here. High wave, bearish candle. Entry should have been there, stop could have been, actually stop would have been below this purple line, which is the 100 simple on a weekly. And I would have exited with a gap fill at 2R. I wouldn't have held all day, I don't think, on Whirlpool. But that really was a drastic candle. What I can say though, relatively for a high degree of certainty is what Whirlpool will do soon. This candle will retrace. I can guarantee that almost with a 900% degree of certainty. So it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. It could gap up 
trade up a little bit higher and, um, and retest a little bit. So I'm looking for Whirlpool to buy the dip at some particular point in time based on today's candle and volume looks really, really good. I like it and wait for this candle to pull back some and then when that occurs, like I mentioned, look to kind of buy that dip. Here's IQ. A lot of people keeping their eyes on IQ. It did bang its head against some resistance, which is 1998. It's up a little bit right now post-market. I don't see anything that I love on IQ. Not yet. It's kind of out of resistance right now. I do like it for a short-term bullish play. Not going to deny that. But right now on IQ, let's just wait for some out. I don't see anything on it. If anyone has a trade on it specifically, let me know, but I don't see much personally. Micron technology is hanging out. So NU is chilling. Have a really fun strategy and trade on Micron. This is one that I'm gonna talk more about in the Hedging with Options course that comes out next week that every single person who subscribes to Real Life Trading will get access to. But this is a 135, sorry, a $46 April covered call with a $33 April protective put and sold the February 15th 33 put for 26 cents trying to decrease the cost of that insurance. Realistically on Micron, I'm just gonna let it chop around for a bit. It's banging its head against the 100 on the daily and the 100 simple on a weekly is not that far away. So since we're banging our head against the 100 on the daily, if and when Micron breaks above that high, which it certainly could soon, the highs of these two candles are almost identical and the volume is declining. I do think that MU over the next few days will eventually pop out of here, break above the 100 and go higher. If I get called away on Micron, it won't be until April. And if I get called away at 46, that will be a really nice gain. So I like it, looks good, I'm a fan. Okay, just three left. Here's Raytheon, ticker symbol RTN. And Raytheon is slowly continuing higher. I got out of this one a little bit too early and that's absolutely okay. This was a swing trade that we played uh, with an entry here and a stop loss here. And we got out on this candle for about two and a half hours. It did retest that gap, it traded higher. Earnings is right around the corner. And right now it looks pretty cute. So here's the weekly chart. We're just bouncing off the 200. The reason I got in last time, and really the reason that it's doing it now is it has traded down to the 200 before. When was that? I thought I found a really good pattern last time. Was it not on the weekly chart? Was it something else? Hmm. I guess I'll have to go back and watch that video. I don't know why, what I found so compelling about this chart. Maybe it was the monthly time frame? Because I found a pattern on Raytheon. I was like, man, this pattern is really powerful. Nope, it was not on the monthly. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. Anyway, look good at the time. So, I mean, RTN, gonna have earnings. I do not know what it's gonna do on earnings, but the only way I'm bearish on Raytheon on earnings is if it gaps down below 165.32. We will put that on the list for Thursday and play it accordingly. Johnson & Johnson was an official swing trade that we are now going to cancel. Congratulations on not getting triggered in on this one, ladies and gentlemen. This is one that I had set up actually before the free week began, but I did look at it yesterday. Uh, I wanted to get in with a stop limit, 126.66 is the stop, 127.11 is the limit. Here's the hourly chart. This is what I wanted Johnson & Johnson to do. So I wanted it to break down, retest, and continue lower, and it did not. So what I'm gonna do is come in on the swing trades and cancel Johnson & Johnson, which is gonna open up for us a new trading opportunity that I guess we'll have to find potentially tomorrow. What I can say is the trade that I looked at or that we looked at yesterday on NKC, this one did fill. So 121.35 limit buy on MKC. We looked at this one yesterday. It did fill today. 
I do like that lower shadow a lot. And I do obviously hope that this thing bounces tomorrow with the broader markets gapping up a little bit. That's the hope anyway. So MKC, official swing trade we set up yesterday, did fill today. And last but not least is Tesla. Love trading me some Tesla with option sales. The volatility on this thing is just incredulously incredible. We will see what happens on Tesla. My thoughts is this going to be a very fun gap. They're around the corner. A gap down on Tesla at 277. Most likely we're going to see Tesla trade into 250 and then bounce. A gap up on Tesla, and I have no idea what it does. But we will analyze it, discuss it, and talk about it more in depth when it happens. We will look at Tesla tomorrow afternoon along with Thursday. Tomorrow afternoon is technically Energy Wednesday. What beautiful stocks would you all like to look at tomorrow? It can be an energy stock or it can just be anything that you specifically would like to check out. Be happy to do that. NEE, CSCO, let's check out our HUYA and QTTT official swing trade. SOXS, MGM, BP, First Solar, Edinburgh, Vail, LNG, USX, JNUG, Overstock.com. Very cool. Apple, of course. Sure, we can easily look at Apple. No worries at all. Baba, absolutely look at Baba, ECA, perfect. Wonderful. Okay, team. Thanks for being here. I will be here at the exact same time, exact same place tomorrow. Hope you're all here as well. The free week continues tomorrow. Energy Wednesday in the building from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until then, love life, love life, and it. You rock. Bye.